Hello everyone, my name is Michael Regina. I'm the author and illustrator of the all ages horror graphic novel, The Sleepover. And this is my YouTube channel where I talk about the books I'm making, my creative process, role playing games, a little bit of everything. And uh, this particular video is an update uh, on my latest graphic novel project, Deepwater Creek. And uh, I've been doing these uh, videos off and on as I get the chance to, and there, there's new things to talk about within the story. Uh, or in the process to share with you all. I've been doing videos just to give you an update. So it's been a little bit since the last one um, and large of that, uh, a lot of that has been because life has kind of been weird for the last month or so, but uh, things are finally starting to even back out. Um, not necessarily bad things going on, but you know, some, some stuff that I really had to focus my attention on in this uh, maintaining uh, this video diary of the production of the process was just kind of falling by the wayside as a result of that. But um, but I wanted to give a quick update on where we're at, we're at and things, because um, some cool stuff has kind of come along. So yeah, let me share that with you. All right, so uh, the last time that I did an update, I was talking about uh, where I was, where I was beginning to do some inking and things like that. Uh, and in the middle of working on that, I, I made a decision that I wasn't very happy with the way the um, the inks were turning out. I was using a pencil brush uh, within Clip Studio Paint to ink with, and like, I, like I so desperately in my soul want to use that brush for my artwork, but the reality is I'm rarely ever happy with like what it actually looks like in practice on the page. There's just something about it that I don't like. And I think a lot of it has to do with like line variations or the thick to thin element of using a pencil brush because a pencil on a sheet of paper has very little thick to thin, tends to be very uniform in its size. And I just, it's just not how I draw. <laughs> and so there's a part of me that's like constantly wanting to change the way I draw because I have all these artists that I love. Like uh, This Was Our Pact by Ryan Andrews, which is one of my favorite graphic novels for young readers or middle grade graphic novels. The art in this book is gorgeous. And um, I find myself so often wanting to emulate his style. I mean, there's this, it's just got this beautiful kind of penciled style with light colors and so on. But you know, what's hard for me sometimes is to recognize that like, I may like something, but that doesn't mean that's the way I should do it. And um, that there's a certain aesthetic to me that um, that I've developed over time and it's okay. Like that my style can be okay. I don't have to change my style at the end of the day. I, I suppose it's just like that artist insecurity thing where you're always kind of wanting to just get better or think maybe there's a part of your style that you wish was different. But at any rate, I had been um, working on pages using that style and I got about 14 pages in and I really wasn't very happy with what the results were looking like. So I decided to throw them out, those pages out and start all over again by inking and using the same tools I had used with uh, the sleepover. And honestly, the pages I just think look so much better by comparison. Um, one, there's just a confidence to the line that I didn't have because it was a process I wasn't used to and so on. Um, and I think it's, it's come out, it's coming out good. I'm really happy with it. So it's a bummer to lose some time in that production process, but in the grand scheme of things, redoing 14 pages so that they, um, that they meet the kind of the standard of the rest of it's not the end of the, in the end of the world, you know? But uh, along with that, uh, I really made a decision that I needed to get the story of this book under control as best as possible, as soon as possible. I had been doing, I had been trying to do like a process where I would draw some pages and I would write some pages and I would thumbnail some pages and I was gonna do like an amalgam of all these things throughout the day. And um, it just, my schedule's just not permitting for it. Um, you know, I, when I when my kids were littler and I had less going on, it was less of a concern to have kind of so much going on. Uh, and what I'm discovering as I'm getting older is that uh, that's not so much the case any longer. Like my time is pretty precious, and I uh, I just don't I don't have the sort of flexibility or necessarily the energy that I used to have uh, to complete these things. So. I find that I'm way better anyway if I can learn to just sort of sit down and focus on one thing until that one thing is done or at least as close to done as I can possibly do it. And then if my brain starts to get pretty tired of that process, I don't necessarily do well by dropping that and like trying to do something else and doing a little bit of everything every day. It's almost better for me just to like stop what I was doing for a little while, focus on something else, change it up for a while until I'm kind of getting tired of that process and then jump over to another one. 
Um, and so I kind of just, I guess I just needed a break for a little bit. And uh, I have revisited the, um, the the writing process now, and I've writ rewritten the majority of the book. I made some changes uh, to the flow of the story and sort of like what the point of it all was at the um, after my last draft was reviewed by my editor and my agent. And they weren't like broad swath changes. The story is still basically the story, but one of the things I wanted to really inject back into it was a sense of fun and adventure that I felt like that that draft did, did not have a lot of. That draft was very um, heavy in its tone. And I feel like the, the story definitely is bumped up. Like it's got more fun in it. It's got more suspense. It's even got more horror in it than it did before. And I hope that all that together, plus doing revisions and rewriting and thinking through what exists, that um, it'll only continue to grow in that way. So um, I just finished write, rewriting the entire second act of the book. So um, from beginning to end, the second act of the story. And it, I think it works really well. And uh, I will be thumbnailing that section next. I'm gonna take a break and really focus in on thumbnailing that section and then smashing that together with my first act and then taking a look at all of that and saying, am I good with all of this? And then it'll be one more pass through the script for the finale, which has largely been unchanged. And so that's one of the reasons I'm sort of taking a break is not because um, I don't know the ending. The ending is written and I've liked the ending uh, for a long time. In fact, this entire rewrite has been about rewriting the rest of the book to fit that ending even more. Um, and so I think it's I think it's come out really well. My wife finished reading it last night. I asked her to go through the book and give me her honest opinion before I sat down and started thumbnailing. And she came out and said, you know, um, she said she liked it and she thought it was good. And I asked her, you know, some general things. And she just said, you're going to need to, this will segue into the next discussion. She's like, you need to watercolor this book. And I said, why? And she's like, cause I do not want to help flat this thing. And what she meant by that was, is that the story, like this book, it's ending and everything in it is going to be the most epic thing I've ever drawn. And if I can pull it off, oh boy, I think it's gonna be rad. I think it's gonna be really rad. Now, you know, it's one of these things, it's, one, it's a story that makes me nervous because I feel like I'm taking a chance. And that, usually I think when you feel that way, you know you're in a good place. Like, you know you're doing something interesting and different. And yeah, there's some similarities between it and other projects I've made, but there's some swings for the fences that I'm taking that I've never taken before that um, really push the scale of the story bigger than anything I've ever made. So I'm, I'm really intrigued to see where that goes, given the fact that it's been a book about a group of kids who are just fishing on a river for a monster. And then I think it gets pretty, um, pretty wild by the end. So very excited to see what you all think about that end of it. But like I said, segueing into kind of the last bit of information or update, um, I have been looking at, uh, I'm still trying to decide what I want to do with watercolor versus digital. And so what I actually figured I'd do while I'm bringing this up is show you a quick time lapse of me working on a sample page of the book. Uh, so you could see kind of what that's been looking like. I've been, um, I'm so torn on wanting to work with watercolor for this book for my final colors and then doing digital enhancements because there's just an allure to watercolor that I can't shake. I, I cannot shake it. I don't know what it is. I don't know why I love it so much, but the, the issue I continue to run into with it is that I like to draw digitally and I like to color um, traditionally. And that obviously creates some problems. How do you get that digital drawing onto an artboard that looks good? Um, are you going to uh, print that artwork out uh, in blue line and then go back over it again? and? Uh, you know, then watercolor over that. And the answer to that question is, I just don't have time to redraw the same page multiple times. It's either, so the, the question for me in working on the book in this way is coming down to, can I draw digitally, print that work out, watercolor over a sheet of paper and be happy with the results? And if I can be, then I'm making a pretty strong argument for continuing in that process. And then I've added in the additional element of using an airbrush with this process to uh, add, I want as little need for the computer as possible. The biggest challenge I'm finding even with an airbrush is that glow effects, fog effects, things like that, the computer 
uh, it, it's just like if you screw it up on the um, on the page, it just creates such a nightmare. So I'm still leaning towards doing like my glow effects and things like that on the computer as opposed to in the uh, on the page, but we'll see. So I'm working on this here uh, in this process. I'm, you can see I'm giving doing another test. What I discovered was that the paper that I liked using the most uh, for watercoloring was the, uh, the Strathmore mixed media paper, which I still really, really love. But what I was discovering is that when I printed out the art from the computer to that paper, um, the it was it wasn't fully um, waterproof in the way that some other papers hold it. The lines always came out a bit duller than they should have been, and there was a lot of lift with the painting process. So that sent me down a, um, a rabbit hole a little bit about like what kind of paper should I use because if I couldn't get a piece of paper that would with withhold or with um, hold down the ink as well as it should, then I was gonna have a really big problem with this sort of print out on paper, the watercolor over it effect, because the mixed media paper was lifting so much of the black up that by the time I was done, the line art looked a lot more dull and wasn't really holding up. And I remember that I had done some watercoloring on some other sheets of paper using this process, then it turned out really good. Um, and it, it looked really good at the end of the day. And I was trying to, I was like, what paper was that? And I guess I took for granted that I was, I was testing out papers for a long time. And I, and I just always assumed, oh, it works really well. I print it out on the paper and I watercolor over it and it works really well. And I wasn't remembering that some of the reasons why it was looking really well is because I was using a different paper. I wasn't using the mixed media paper. And the paper I was actually using is this stuff. It's not like, real expensive watercolor paper but for whatever reason it really holds down the blacks of the paint of the ink from the printer and i use like a brother all-in-one printer it really holds the inks down and it prints out at a high enough quality that i don't feel like i'm losing anything and then the it, there's not a lot of lift through the process of watercolor so i've been giving this a try and the honest answer at this point is I don't know whether I'm going to do it or not, whether I'm going to move to watercolor or not. I imagine by the next update, you're going to have an answer because I have to make a decision because very soon I'm going to need to either start hiring a flatter or something to work on the digital colors if that's the, the route I decide to go. So um, that's kind of the big update at this moment. I'm plowing forward with thumbnails. I'm uh, inking some pages as I get the opportunity and um, yeah, just I'm in the stretch here. Once the thumbnails are done for the book, that will be a huge lift for me because I will be able to say from a story standpoint that the story is about as good as it's gonna get. And I can look at this book and say, I'm, I'm happy with it, I'm proud with it. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm happy with it and I'm proud of it. And I'm, I'm ready to go. So it's, it's, it's moving along. Uh, still the goal, if at all possible, is to get the book done so that it could be out next fall. That would be great if I could pull that off. Hard to say though. Anyway, that's the update for Deepwater Creek. I appreciate you hanging around. Look forward to talking to you some more next time. And um, yeah, appreciate you. If you haven't read The Sleepover, please give it a, a read. Uh, you can check it out at libraries, bookstores, everywhere. And uh, please leave a review for it if you've not. Uh, that really goes a long way in helping uh, the book get known and recognized by people. Uh, it really, you know, I appreciate it so much. So if you can do that and also consider liking and subscribing if you're enjoying this video content, I'll be hopefully doing this stuff a little bit more frequently as life starts to slow down. So appreciate all of you. Take care. I'll talk to you next time.